This is Michelle Ruff, the voice of Jill Valentine. And when I'm not stranded on the Queen Zenobia, I listen to the Crimson Head Elder podcast. Can you see that area behind me beneath the red tinted sky? That is what's left of Raccoon City. Our platoon is cut off. No survivors found. Your brother starved to death in here. And be eaten by one of those undead monsters. We're both gonna die. Wait, don't shoot! Down! I lost all my men because of her! All is lost. Cries of agony. Stars. Unity breeds power. Welcome to Crimson Head Elders' coverage of MCM Comic Con. So grateful to the organisers of MCM for bringing to London two of the most popular and erudite actors from AMC's The Walking Dead, and for granting us access to these hugely talented stars. For an exclusive interview with King Ezekiel himself and his trusted commander and confidant, Jerry. Yes, we are so blessed to be able to put your questions to Carrie Payton and Cooper Andrews. At our Survival Horror website, members have been posting their questions, and I was privileged to meet these two icons and to ask a selection of those questions in the time we were generously gifted. Mr. Payton and Mr. Andrews, thank you so much for being with us today. I'm George Trevor from the survival horror website, Crimson Head Elder. And if I may, I've got some questions from our members. May I first ask, were either of you fans of the comics had even known about this series via the comics before you took on these roles? You know, I hadn't read the comics before the TV show, and uh, and I, I started reading the comics and got very into them. And uh, I ha had to learn to divorce myself from the TV show and the comic because because the characterizations, you know, uh, yeah. actually kind of threw me off a little bit because they do kind of zig and zag away from the uh, the, the comics. So so uh, I although I love them, I have to take it with a grain of salt when I'm thinking about the role. Yeah, and I I I was a fan of the show. I didn't know it was a comic. I mean, I knew. I mean, I did know before I was on it, but um, it's one of those things where I. I don't know, I like watching the movie, and then once I know that movie's done, I'm going to start reading right, it. Right, it's the right. same with me for the comics. Like, it's, yeah, it's not like a, it was pretty I love cool. comics. I yeah, it was say. pretty cool to see that first scene with Carol and, and, uh, and, and Ezekiel, and then to read the, uh, the scene with, um, Michonne and, and Ezekiel in the, in the comics and see that it was almost verbatim. Yeah. It was kind of amazing to see that. Yeah. Yeah. You have been addressed by the king, yet you remain silent. Do I detect skepticism? Perhaps you think me mad. Perhaps you see this place as nothing more than a mirage. So, tell me, what do you think of the kingdom, Carol? What do you think of the king? I am not an eccentric character myself. And and uh, and honestly, I, I have very little in common with uh, with Ezekiel. So it takes me what's um, a good good four and a half hours to get. I, I like I like a lot of silence. Mm -hmm. You know, um, no no one can talk directly to me, and definitely no eye contact. I try. Not to. You know exactly <laughs> before uh, before I find my way uh, to he who is Ezekiel. Um, no, that's not true at all. He's it's actually very. Um, uh, uncomplicated I, I i feel like i understand the character and and uh know the character even his speech pattern i kind of uh um uh, uh patterned it after uh, my 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 great uncle neb who uh who was a big southern gentleman who kind of talked in this sort of you know uh uh I, I guess, uh, all-encompassing sort of way. You know, <laughs> everything he said always seemed to have a flourish with his hands, you know. <laughs> you know he had, uh, and so, so uh, I don't know, I felt like I kind of grew up with uh, a lot of the aspects of, uh, of Ezekiel. And, uh, and so it ended up being kind of easy. Okay, well, talking of English accents, mm -hmm. uh, were you a fan of the Bard 
before you took on this role, you have certainly cast a whole new coolness over Shakespeare. Uh, actually, I'd, um, I, I, I've never heard of Shakespeare. Too. Tell me more about him. <laughs> no, no, I, I, uh, yeah, no, I, I've always uh, lo loved Shakespeare. I, I, I spent a lot of my, my 20s doing a lot of Shakespeare. I, I, I can still, uh, I, I think I can still quote the Henry V prologue if, you, uh, if, if, uh, if asked to. Wow. But I, I um, yeah, I, I, uh, I adore it. And, <laughs> You know, and yeah, and these uh, these, these things tend tend to happen. That's all right. You just you just struggle me away right now. <laughs> there you go. But uh, yeah, yeah, I, I'm, um, I'm I've always been a big fan of uh, Shakespeare, and I love the uh, and uh, I love that that I'm able to to use it in this in this sort of quasi way. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And Mr. Andrews, do you feel that in the episode containing Shiva's death and preceding episodes that uh, your character, Jerry, was focused upon in terms of his own loss for the tiger. He himself obviously had his own relationship. Uh, he was trusted to come, you know, within a safe distance of Shiva. So, I mean, how do you feel that your loss of, of Shiva was represented uh, during the episodes? I mean, Jerry, I mean, me and Jerry on this one, uh, I think we just felt everyone's loss on that i mean we lost like a hundred of people you know uh, like people that we you know out the background these awesome you know friendly group uh that we were with for a year and then we we you know when we get the script i literally cried three times reading it i was just like <laughs> um but yeah so shiva was part of it but i mean like you know losing losing our buddies and that was also the also was kind of a kick in the boys right there so yeah uh -huh. Definitely feeling the uh, the, yeah. the fact that we lost so many people kind of embodied the idea of of, uh, of the loss of Shiva, you know, and and uh, and as far as uh, when we were thinking about it, uh, uh, even in the moment in that in that ravine with with, uh, with the tiger, it was uh, we we don't divorce those two things from each other the the kingdom the people the community and 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 shiva the the cat are kind of one and the same in our minds you know yeah. and uh and so uh and so losing her you know it was it was it was like losing them and losing them was like losing her they they kind of sew you up sew up your heart just so they can rip it out again but uh but i think that's what we love about the kingdom yeah is that uh it's that is despite the darkness you know, uh, you fight through it, you know? And I think that's why people keep watching. I brought, have so many people who have tattooed and yet I smile on their arm, on their back, <laughs> on their shit, you know, come and, and, uh, and it's, and it's like, despite, you know, the, their cancer treatment, their depression, their just hardship in life or whatever. I, they're, they're like, they're like, you smile through it. The King smiles through it. I smile through it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I love that. And then, uh, yeah. I mean, I guess the, the thing about how I think of the show, I mean, it's kind of like, do you get a dog? You know, you have 12, 15 years with one, um, and then you still have this whole life. And with the TV show, I mean, there's so many times where you do a role, and then they're like, I'm going to go off and work on that in that camp in, like, uh, you know, in South America, so I won't be on the show anymore. It's like, I, but they're gone, right. regardless, you know, and it's the same thing. I kind of like the... I like that finality when it's like, okay, they're definitely never coming back. Not <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. They are gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there's, there's something... I don't know, I like and we always completion. see him at the cons, which is nice. Yeah, yeah, and then we, you know, then it's like, oh, what are you working on? It's like, oh, that massive movie. Congratulations. <laughs> 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 oh, not sweating. Perfect. That must be so exactly, nice. Exactly. Yeah. How yeah. happy you must be. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. You get, you get, uh, you get put through the, the ringer on this show, man. Yeah. It's hot and nasty and sweaty, and you love it. Yeah. There's but, never uh, a day where I don't have an injury from that show i get injured somehow in like some minor way and it's like oh where'd that come from right whatever you know exactly. that's just that's the nature of the show Shiva, enough the fair maiden has been through a myriad of trials they are our guests chill it up Bess. chill it up jerry you are a faithful steward but your words leave me pitch kettled I understand your concern, Shiva. You haven't met Carol, nor have I. But if she is a friend of Morgan, we shall consider her a friend of the realm until proven otherwise. It's it's who we are. It's how we uh, how yeah. we overcome the darkness. You know, in a uh, 
in, in this uh, this crazy world where, where, like we said, there's dead people walking around. Yeah, there are dead people walking, eating people, people shooting. Like, we have these, you know, this BMX armor, you know, we would get these messages like, oh, it's not going to stop bullets. It's like, we didn't think bullets were the thing we had to worry about. <laughs> right. I thought things were going to bite us. Yeah. Again, Carl could have used some chest protection. Exactly. It would have, dude, yeah. if he'd have had on, had yeah. on a little bit of a kingdom armor. Yeah. That would have been, I mean, that was just right there. Boom, right yeah. there. I'm telling you. A little you, softball. We got I mean, a little strap on. thing yeah. going right there. <laughs> I think it's testament to your performances that some viewers do get confused and think it's a documentary. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Majesty, you're like, I'm okay. Jerry. I'm going to borrow this for a sec. Jerry, I can... Your Majesty... You don't need to call me that. Dude, yes, I do. Early on in some of your earlier scenes in The Walking Dead, did you feel that the humor that was being injected into your character, were you concerned? I mean, it certainly didn't transpire to be the case, but were you concerned that some of that humor might be a bit jarring and out of context with the genre that you were working in? What are you trying to say? Man? I was very, I was very <laughs> jarring. No, it was, uh, you know, it's, it's funny because I, I per, yeah, it was, it was, it was jarring because, I mean, I've been a fan of the show from the beginning and then I'm reading these sides. I mean, it was like I was talking to a dog named Santiago, and not Ezekiel was like Mister like Yoshimaru or something like that. And um, I really was like, "It's fruit time." Okay, well, this is just the the, the fake sides. And then when the real script came out, I'm like, "Oh, I say all those things." <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, but when we when we were shooting it, I was, he was worried so about nervous. it. I was not. I I knew that we needed to be the light in the darkness, yeah. you know? And so, uh, and so, um, yeah, Cooper was, uh, he, he was a little, you know, worried about how it was going to come off. And I kept telling him, Dan, you're doing great. This is going to be awesome. And I saw the, the, the first cut of the, uh, of the, the, uh, episode before he did. And I immediately called him and I was like, dude, everybody is going to love you. I cannot wait for you to see it. And he was like, are you sure? Because I was worried about this. And I was like, you got nothing to worry about, man. And and obviously, you know, he, he just exudes his cooperness, you know, uh, on on the screen. And, um, and uh, I'm happy to report that I was exactly right. <laughs> yes, you were. <laughs> I was, it was one of those things when, oh, here we go. Like Halloween came and that, that episode was airing. I was like, it's like. Uh, and then it was when um I guess it was when Talking Dead came on and yeah. my phone, which I had notifications for everything, it started it was at ninety percent before I watched the episode and then my pocket started getting like burning up. It started getting really hot. I took my phone out, it was like drained to twenty percent and like Instagram, Twitter, <laughs> all the social media is like, Oh, all right, so I need to change notifications now. <laughs> you gotta turn those off there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was awesome. Cooper, you held that axe with such authority. When you finally got to use it, it really must have been very cathartic. Super cathartic. <laughs> Dude, he was dying to swing that thing. Uh, and here's the thing. That thing was like 50 pounds. It was not like, it, you know, they had a little rubber one, but it, 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 but, but it looked like rubber, you know, kind of bouncing on his back. And so, uh, and, and so they just, everybody came up to him and was like, is that thing real? And, it, and, and he, he'd hand it to him and they just yeah. go, don't. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, Andy when he first, uh, he's like, now is this supposed to be like a real axe, in, like a fake axe in the show? I just went, like I handed it off to him and he went, <laughs> and he cursed and then he was like, what the? And then he passed it to Norman and Norman's like, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no, yeah, yeah. it felt good using. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The dead are nearly upon us. Give me my sword. We can fight them together. What the hell are you doing? Getting out of here. I can't stand on my own. I can't climb that. You don't need to. Negan was hoping to have your ass chained to the sanctuary fence. You... The widow, Rick, get your head on a pike will do just fine. 
Maybe break it up a little. Avoid the obvious symmetry. I think I've fired on the show. I think I've fired on more more people than I have zombies on this show. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah we, we came in when it was really about the fight with the yeah. people more than with the zombies. And uh and uh, I was really excited actually uh even though it was one of the most gut-wrenching scenes was when when Shiva died, but it was also uh, I, I I killed like four uh, walkers yeah. in a row, and I was like, "Finally, yeah, I get to you know, I get I get to uh, you know, uh, uh, save the day for um for uh, 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 Cooper and Jerry just a little bit, you yeah. know, uh, after he uh, you know splits that one dude in two. Yeah, it was <laughs> yeah, I liked that moment. I mean, I, I almost passed out five times during it, but you know, I did. Like that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it was hot and it was muggy and it was awful and it was awesome. Yeah, great boot camp of a episode. Absolutely. <laughs> How I played Jerry. Whenever he's shooting or whenever he's fighting, he hates it. Like, he's good at it, but he hates it. Like, he doesn't want to kill anybody, but some people do need to die. Talking about that tension, I guess, between optimism and pessimism, the show as it's gone along has kind of drifted in different directions. And in terms of the ultimate destiny of this world, do you think that we're heading towards an optimistic place like the kingdom would represent? Or do you think that ultimately the world of The Walking Dead has to end badly? I mean... I think we gotta be optimistic. About I think that. we gotta be optimistic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like uh, you, you've only uh, you, you've only got really the the, uh, the the winners always end up optimistic. You know, it's uh, and and honestly, I think that's how you end up winning in the per in the first place. You know, the uh, it's um, the the j just like in this this industry, uh, you know, uh, you've got to keep your head up and stay hopeful. You know, and that's how you get to the, this point. I've been doing this for twenty years. People think that I just made it. I made it a long time ago when I decided that this was my passion and this was my energy and I was going to be positive in my outlook, you know, and no matter how many times people told me no, you know, I, I was going to I was going to keep my head up and keep on going. And so uh, and so the even even in, in an apocalypse, you know, it's the people who keep their head up and stay positive. At the end of the day, those are the people that are going to that are going to be uh, winning. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna take Carl's positiveness yeah. and take take it all away. We're gonna bring it to that game tomorrow. Absolutely. Your character has had some some quite strong emotional scenes with Melissa McBride's mm -hmm. character. Um, do you think now that the Shadow of War is over, that the writers are gonna develop their relationship a bit deeper? I suppose you got more time to do that. If uh you know if you're not constantly uh you know looking over your shoulder and yeah. and uh you know and uh, firing shots, but uh but yeah I, I suppose um you know time will tell and and we'll uh, we'll just have to see whenever I think they're gonna zig they end up zagging yeah. you know we'll all have to tune in I mean, in October. I see a roof and I see the stairs. Yeah, and, and I see a little like reflective mirror thing. Mm -hmm. And we could <laughs> maybe throw you off of it if we told you because yeah. because we are not going to get in trouble. You don't know That's AMC right. has drones and and tiny little uh tiny little drones like like little flies and they're all over the walls and literally we would not make it out of the room Someone if we told you anything. Is from AMC. Absolutely. Actually, one, one of you, of you is. You, yeah. It might be you who asked the question. <laughs> yeah, like this was a test. test. Did we pass? Yeah. I'm worried. <laughs> I'm very worried. I will say this, though, if you have five more seconds. I'm really looking forward to season nine. That's all. There you go. That's yeah, it. yes. I will give you that. <laughs> Thank you guys very Thank much. You. Two wonderful human beings, as well as first-class performers and artists at the top of their game. Immense thanks to MCM Comic Con, and of course both Carrie Payton and Cooper Andrews. This has been a Crimson Head Elder exclusive. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Survival Horror Podcasts, for more interviews with the stars of the genre. Also receive daily updates by following us at Twitter, at Crimson underscore Head, and become a resident at our community website, www.crimson-head.com. Thank you and good night from all the Crimson Head Elder team.